In this video, I'm going to show you how to create, export, and import your own LUT right inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's get into it. So once you're inside of Adobe Premiere Pro and you've got some footage on your timeline, chances are your Premiere is going to look like this. So as you can see, we are in the editing space up here, but we want to go over into the color space. So we'll just move one tab across and select color. And this is going to load up the Lumetri color window. So as you can see on the right here, we've got basic correction, creative curves, color wheels and match, HSL secondary and vignette. So we're going to use these tools to color grade this first clip. We're going to save all of those as a preset or a LUT and we'll import that LUT onto this second clip here. So we'll select this first clip. We'll go up into basic correction. And from here, we've got all of the basic stuff. So we've got our temperature. This is our white balance, so we can make this warmer or colder. We've got our tint. So if it's leaning a bit towards the purples, pull it towards the greens and vice versa. We can pull up the exposure. We can add some contrasts, adjust the highlights. So I'm going to pull the highlights down to restore some of that highlight detail there. We'll increase the shadows a little bit to get more shadow information. You can increase the whites or pull the whites down. You can increase the blacks or pull the blacks down. I'm going to pull the blacks down just to add a bit of contrast there. And then of course you can increase or decrease the saturation. So your saturation is essentially the intensity of the color. So if you want a black and white preset, just pull this down to zero. If you wanted a really colorful color, then you just pull this all the way up to 200, but 200 looks a little bit too intense for my liking. So I'm going to pull that down to around 140 and that gives us a nice color pop. Then we'll move down to creative. And as you can see, we can add a specific look or a LUT here, but we'll skip that section for now. We'll go down to adjustments. We can add some faded film. We can add some sharpening if we want some sharpening, but I wouldn't advise adding too much sharpening because it can look very messy like you can see. So I'm just going to add the slightest amount and then we'll go down to vibrance. I'm going to increase the vibrance and the vibrance is a little bit like saturation, but it doesn't look as messy. It looks a bit cleaner. It makes the colors pop in a cleaner way. And then we've got saturation again, and then we've got our shadow tint and our highlight tint. So if I pull the shadows down to blue and I pull the highlights all the way up to orange, you can see we've got this really dramatic look. Now, this obviously looks horrendous. You obviously wouldn't do this in your edits, but I'm just going to keep it like this for now so you can keep track of this LUT later on. Moving on, we've got curves and these curves are the exact same as the RGB curves you would have used before. You can go into the effects panel in Premiere and if you search for curves, you've got RGB curves and that is the exact same thing as this Lumetri curves. So your highlights are on the top right and your shadows are on the bottom left and your midtones are in the middle. So if you want to make the brightness, if you want to make the highlights brighter, you just pull this over to the left. If you want to make the shadows darker, add more contrast. You just pull this over to the right. Or you can create an S curve and you can just pull this down, pull this up or vice versa. And that is affecting the RGB channel. So all of the red, green and blue channels at the same time. If you wanted to go into a specific channel, then you can just select the red, green or blue and make your corrections in the specific slider that you want. Moving on, we've got hue versus saturation, hue versus hue, hue versus luma, luma versus saturation, saturation versus saturation. And you can make all of your adjustments here as you would like with the curves. But once you're happy with that look, we can go down to color wheels and match. And as you can see, we've got shadows, midtones and highlights. So again, I can pull the shadows towards the blues. We'll pull the midtones up towards the reds. We'll pull the highlights towards the green, just so you can see which areas are being targeted. If you don't know, the shadows are the darker area in the image. The highlights are the brightest bits. So in this example, the shadows will be the rocks. The highlights will be the sun and the midtones are all those colors in between. So make your adjustments. We'll move down to HSL secondary. And this is where you're going to target specific colors. So just for now, so we can see what we're doing, we're going to turn off creative curves, color wheels, and we'll even turn off basic correction. So we'll go back to how it first looked and I'm going to target a specific color. So let's go for this bluish C slash sky color. So we'll select this blue and we'll move the hue slider over to the left and the right. Now, the way this slider works is you just drag this across and anything that gets grayed out will not be affected, but anything that isn't grayed out will be affected. So as you can see, we're getting part of the sea. We're getting a little bit of the sky affected and everything else will be untouched. 
So once you're happy with that, you can go down to correction and you can make your adjustments. You can add some color, you can add your temperature, tint, contrast, sharpen, saturation, and it will only affect that specific color as you can see. But I'm just gonna turn all of the other colors back on for now. And then we'll move down to vignette. And as you can see, we've got a mount at the very top. If we pull this to the right, that is going to add an intense white vignette. If we pull this to the left, it's going to add an intense dark vignette or a black vignette. We have got our midpoint and the further we pull this to the left, the closer the vignette is going to move into the center of the frame and the further to the right we move it, the more it's going to move out. We'll pull this all the way to the left so you can see how the following settings are going to affect the vignette. Got the roundness, if we pull this over to the left then it becomes more square and if we pull this to the right it becomes a spotlight. And then we've got our feathering, so pulling to the right and that's going to add a nice soft feather to the vignette. Or you can drag this to the very left and it is going to be this harsh circle in the middle of your video. Which, in my opinion, looks really ugly, but if that's the effect you're going for, great. Adjust your settings accordingly. But once you're happy with the look of that, we can now go ahead and export this LUT and we can import it into Premiere. So, we'll go up to the Limetri Color tab at the top here. And you can see we've got this burger icon here. We'll just select this, go down to export.cube. That is going to load up your finder and you can just drop this wherever you want to drop this. So I'm just going to create a new folder, rename this as yellow LUT, press save. And that has saved that preset, that LUT as a specific file. So if we go over to this second video clip here, we go up to Lemetri. If we go into basic correction, select input LUT, and select browse we can now navigate to that specific lot that we just created and exported to our finder press open and that is going to import that lot and add those color settings onto that footage and of course if you wanted you can add this onto an adjustment layer and add that adjustment layer on top of all of your footage to affect all of your footage within your sequence but there you go that is how you create your own LUT, export it as a .cube file in Premiere, and then import that LUT onto other footage right inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. So thank you for watching. I really appreciate your support, and I will see you on the next video. See you there.